Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jeremy. I'm Alan. And you are officially tuned in to the GG Dispatch each week on Tuesday, bright and early. We consolidate the week's biggest headlines in gaming news. Whether you're listening in on your commute, during your workout, or you just have us on in the background, we want to thank you for listening in. And speaking of thanks, another thank you to the kind folks at Audio Technica for providing the microphones that both Alan and I are using, the AT2020 USB-X. Whether you're just starting out on your content creator journey or you're a seasoned pro, Audio Technica has the products for you. Um... Well, it's been a very uh, busy weekend uh, for me. It took a long weekend in celebration of uh, the Elden Ring holiday, of course. Uh, I took off work on on Friday to fully dive into uh, the Shadow of the Erd Tree expansion, uh, much like my time when uh, I did uh, Rebirth, uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I got pizza for lunch. Like I just went total college like bachelor mode um which you know always always feels good kind of feels like you know when when you're staying home from school but your parents still like get you mcdonald's for lunch or something you're still like well enough to like goof around and they kind of let you um full-on gremlin yeah full-on gremlin mode uh and it was it was great I i had a great time with it um i think we'll we'll chat a little bit more about uh elden ring uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree discourse online and such, but overall, this expansion is amazing. Like, it's spectacular. It, it really could have been Elden Ring 2. Um, I mean, I guess in a way, kind of like Elden Ring 1 and a half, which was why it's a DLC, but like the, and I, it's been kind of beaten to death, but uh, Miyazaki is a liar. When he come, when it comes to how big this world is, like <laughs> he said, it the world is like a little bigger than Limgrave, like the starting area, and that's just false. That's just not true at all. <laughs> um, the world is massive. Um, absolutely has a good, probably forty to sixty hours of game time in it. Um, if you just rush like the remembrance bosses, you're probably looking at like fifteen to twenty, but. Honestly, there's just so much like richness and and lore to uncover, uh, and of course things to go and explore and find and do. Uh, that this this DLC is is one of the most impressive um, that has ever been made, and uh, I've had a great time with it. So um, that's that's what I did over the weekend, along with many others online. And thanks, thanks for all the Twitter folks who were engaging with me over the weekend. And uh, I got to engage with some other folks who, who were having a great time with it too. We all kind of commiserated over Rolana and um, you know, the freaking hippo uh, and other crazy encounters uh, in shadow of the earth tree so far. Um, and yeah, it's been a, it's been a great time. So please tell me that hippo does like a hungry, hungry hippo move. Oh yes. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Multiple, Thanks. actually. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like he has like this. He has this like charge, like this slow charge attack where you have to kind of like you can't really like dodge roll all the way. You have to like run at an angle. Um, and then he also has you know kind of like side swipe, side bites, and that sort of thing. Uh, God, he does so much damage. Um, anyways, I'm glad I got that fight over with. <laughs> but don't worry if you're looking for a hungry, hungry hippo maneuver, it's there. Um, what about you, Alan? What, what have you been up to this weekend? What uh, any any gaming happening? Oh, I know your your PS Five is out of commission, um, but you know any any games you've been playing or anything else that you've been digging into? Yeah. So as I've said before on the on the show, I've like my sort of favorite game to kind of jump in and out of is FIFA FIFA twenty three at the moment because it's uh, what's included with the Game Pass. Um, so of course I'm a big soccer fan, um, and for me, like this has been an awesome summer. The European Championships are happening right now. Copa America, which is basically like, you know, the championship of, of this part of the world is also taking place. Uh, there's been a lot of soccer, so I've been kind of just enjoying that because these only happen every four years, kind of similar to the World Cup. Uh, right, but right. other than that, I did watch the second episode of the second season of House of the Dragon. It's still good, man. They, has it hasn't didn't drop off at all. It just kept going. And 
what I love again is sort of like those after episodes behind the scene kind of special videos that they just kind of chuck in there. They just plays immediately after the episode's over. Um, I'm enjoying the fact that uh, the, the, the music is still really good. The cinematography is really good. And like at the end of the episode, instead of giving you like, Oh, on the next episode, it kind of gives you almost like a tease, like the rest of the season. Um, and it, it all looks good. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Again, you know, you never know. It can always drop off like towards the end or middle or something, but uh, it's looking like it's going to be a solid season. Yeah. I, like I mentioned, I, I haven't been in, you know, the world of uh, game of Thrones in in some time. Um, but you know, the, the, the world intrigues me and I've been hearing good things about House of the Dragon. So I'm glad to hear that it's, you know, it really, it's like that first episode, there's always a lot of hype and energy around it. Right. And, and it's, and I don't say, I, I'm not going to say it's easy. In fact, like a good start is, is hard to do, but I do feel like more often than not folks can kind of buy into the hype of a show after the first episode. Right. So usually the first episode is like, okay, great. Like they, they got off on the right foot, but it's really like the second, third episodes where it's like, okay, is it going to sustain itself? Can it deliver that kind of quality consistently? And so hearing that the second episode is good as well, that's, uh, that's, that's great. So hoping that things are happening, Jeremy. And like, yeah, I can just imagine like if you were like pl- uh, playing Elden Ring as you're watching this, man, that'd be just an intense experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to, co- I, I can't multitask, dude. There's no way I can't. <laughs> There, I would be like watching the show and be like, "Oh my god, they did that!" and I'd be dying on Elden Ring. I just like no, no, you like sort of now. playing them in parallel, like oh, okay, you're, okay, okay. You're, you're, as you're making your way through this DLC, you're also when when you're not playing, you watch you're you're keeping up with House of the Dragon. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, in tandem, huh? Yeah. Well, I might just I might just have to do that. Um. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and dive into uh, this week's news. We have three stories and a deal to call out. Um. The first story being the Nintendo Direct. Holy moly. Uh, we have we had a really quite a quite a show stopping uh, Nintendo Direct this week. Um, for and I see a lot of games. It was like over 30. Yeah, there were so many, so many. Um, and so, like, honestly, um, I I there was a lot kind of not writing on it, right? Like I had talked about how like with the Xbox showcase, one of the reasons why it was like a 10 out of 10 and like so amazing was because there was so much pressure, right? Um, And so I think the Xbox showcase had a high expectation going into it because just of all the bad, just all the bad news that had been going around Xbox and that sort of thing. And so they really needed to knock it out of the park and they did. They had a great show and a lot of people will agree. Like it, it was, it was amazing. Great lineup of games really got folks thinking about, Hey, maybe I should get an Xbox, you know? And I've been seeing more of that discourse online as well. Um, for Nintendo, the expectations, like they weren't high. Or, well, it's kind of, you're either on one of two, two sides of the coin. You either had like no expectations because we're in like the, the lame duck year of the switch, right? We know the, the new switch is coming. We know that, you know, we're kind of just expecting some filler, right? Like just some filler games, some, some minor IP, uh, you know, that sort of thing to kind of fill in the back half of the year into the early part of next year. Uh, maybe a couple yeah, maybe like bolstered, a, bolstered by Indies is what we thought. Yeah. 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 Indie, indies would kind of keep it afloat, you know, and, but no, nothing super major. Right. <clears throat> and so, or, and so that was kind of the expectation, like, okay, like we're going to see some indies, we're going to see some whatever, right? Um, or your expectations were like super high because even though they weren't showing off the Switch 2, you know, maybe we could get kind of a peek at a longer term roadmap on games. Um, you know, definitely people looking forward to seeing some Metroid Prime 2. Of course, everybody's always waiting for Silk Song, like that sort of thing, right? So, um, so it was kind of like you're either on one of, uh, of two sides, but I think the majority of people had the lower expectations, right? Like what's Nintendo going to show us? They're not going to show us a ton, right? Man, eh, whatever. And then they come out swinging. Um, so first there's uh, legend of Zelda echoes of wisdom, uh, a new Zelda property, like, for the switch <laughs> for the switch one like not the switch two for this switch 
that in the year of our Lord, 2024, like that was insane that that came kind of came out of left field. Uh, of course, um, in this game, you'll be uh, in the shoes of Princess Zelda herself as she navigates Hyrule torn by mysterious rifts. Um, it also introduces a new character, a fairy named Tri, uh, and you get to use the power of the Tri Rod to create echoes of environmental objects. Uh, some examples include making bridges out of old beds, using water blocks to get to hard to reach ledges, and other inventive gameplay mechanics. Um, yeah, first time ever Zelda too. Like that hit hard for a lot of like the Zelda yeah. fan community who were waiting for a long time people to do that. Um, actually, uh, Zelda was the primary character in the Wand of Gamelon on the CD. And I'm sorry, we don't recognize Back in that on this show. Alan, Absolutely Alan? not. <laughs> Come on, Alan. Let's put some respect on the Wand of Gamelon. No, um, but yes, you're you're right. There was definitely a lot of, uh, this is basically the Wand of Gamelon done properly, <laughs> where Zelda is going to be the main character in, in a mainline game. Um, and it just, it looks awesome. Love the visual style. Uh, and it's great to be able to, you know, finally some relief for moms everywhere who will watch somebody playing a Zelda game and being like, Oh, look, it's a Zelda. And they're like, yes, it's Zelda and not Link going to save Zelda. Um, it's kind of wild to me that for this, they kind of have that sort of like top down, you know, not mainline Zelda look mm -hmm. and, they kind of are putting in mechanics from uh, Tears of the Kingdom into it. Like, in a yeah, way, not oh, yeah. exactly the same mechanics as Tears of the Kingdom, but very heavily inspired mechanics from Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, that's the thing that really interests me. Yeah, for sure. It, the, yeah, like the the bridges, the water blocks, the you know, all, all the kind of creative elements of it. There, That's definitely, you know, reminding me of, of, of Tears of the Kingdom. So that's... Uh, very cool, and I and I hope people respond positively to that. And and it seems like maybe a bit more of a, a streamlined version of it. So hopefully it's not as daunting because I know some people saw the Tears of the Kingdom systems and they're like, man, this is just way too open, right? It's like too much of a sandbox. Um, so maybe like in this system it'll be a bit more approachable for folks. I don't know. It might it might help enhance the gameplay. We also well the first actual title that that was shown off was Mario and Luigi Brothership. Um, so there's a new Mario and Luigi title, which also was kind of a <laughs> surprise. Um, takes our favorite plumbing duo on an island hopping adventure aboard the part ship, part island called Ship Shape Island. Uh, expect vibrant art, uh, lush rainforest, bustling cities, and cameos from Mushroom Kingdom favorites like Peach and Bowser. Um, you know, they they just had the um, you know remake of Thousand Year Door, and you know got Paper Mario and all this good other stuff. I think. Mario and another Mario and Luigi game was definitely not on a lot of people's radar. And, and RPG was, style one to boot. Yeah, RPG style as well. And so I think that was again, I think what really elevated this show was the ability for Nintendo to surprise and delight. Um and really deliver IPs that we were not expecting um in, in this in this show. So um so yeah, Mario and Luigi looks cool. Oh, I really like the uh, cell shaded touch they put to it. How did you feel about that? Oh yeah, I mean, see, the thing is, like Mario as a franchise, like as an IP, has been around for so long. I don't care what they do with the visual style. You know what I mean? Like I like when they kind of change things up a little bit. You know, they do a two D, they do a three D, they do a, you know, like they do the you know the Paper Mario kind of aesthetic. Um, so I thought it was cool to have a sort of unique visual look. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it looks great. Um, Dragon Quest HD 2D remakes. Um, so this definitely spoke to my, uh, JRPG fan heart. Um, so Dragon Quest fans rejoice. Uh, the HD 2D remakes are coming to switch with Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D releasing first on November 14th, 2024. And then the Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2Ds following in 2025. We live in the beginning of the Erd trilogy with updated visuals and gameplay enhancements. Um, and holy moly, that key art. Like, beautiful. Like, absolutely stunning. And then the reveal that they did, right? Because they, when they were showing it off... Um, I was watching the kind of funny reactions to it as well. And I think Tim was like, are they going to do one and two? Are they going to do one and two? And then they like, were, it seemed like the trailer was finishing. 
And then it started to slowly pan out and then it filled in the art for one and two as well. And it was just such a great reveal. It was so cool. Um, and of course, uh, after losing Toriyama earlier this year, rest in peace. Uh, I know there was a lot of, uh, chatter about how to preserve kind of the, um, the honor of, or the memory of Toriyama and his contributions to Dragon Quest. Um, but honestly, I think this this art is just just great. So I was super excited to see that. Um, are you have you ever gotten into the Dragon Quest franchise at all? No, I never played. For me, it's just kind of like like okay, cool, I guess. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Well, um, definitely. I mean, okay. Here's the thing: Dragon Quest Eleven is amazing definitely a great one to kind of play slowly over time like you play it over the course of like a year you put like a couple hours a week into it and you're just like a little here and there but it's such a great game i love it so much um what console is that on uh switch and i think it's also on ps5 and uh i don't know where else but it's it's pretty it's pretty widespread Uh, i think you can get xbox maybe i'll have to check um so anyways um all good stuff and very exciting. Um, there were also uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns in HD uh, coming in January of next year. Uh, a new Super Mario Party. <laughs> so if you want the multiplayer experience, like that was that was what I was expecting to see. Something like a Mario Party for like the holiday, you know, um, just, you know, to kind of move more units, move more, you know, move more switches or something like, Hey, like get Mario party for the fam and, and they can enjoy it on the holiday. Um, so I was kind, kind of expecting country that looks so low effort. Like I thought it would look it's... better than that. That just felt like that looked mid. And I was like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like the visuals, but I think, you know, again, you have more mini games, more, you know, a, a new mode, a Koopa, Koopa, Th- Koopa Thalon mode, um, which is interesting. Um, and new some new game boards, etc. So again, it's just kind of uh, a, a bit of an expansion, a new a new Mario Party experience. Um, if we're wanting to get that for the holiday, um, Nintendo Switch Online um, added Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past Four Swords. Hell yeah! Like Four Swords was so fun. <laughs> I had so much fun with that game, but it was such a pain in the ass to play because you had to have like adapters and four different like gba units and stuff like it was such a pain and so now it's a lot more straightforward to do some multiplayer link to the past stuff which is great um i also have zero mission uh and uh, the original perfect dark with online multiplayer as well as turok dinosaur hunter so like i don't know these were just like little 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 nuggets little little gems uh tucked in there in the switch online updates um Marvel versus Capcom fighting collection. This was another one that got Twitter all in a flurry, uh, all in a tizzy because Marvel versus Capcom two is finally back baby. Uh, and it is coming to the switch as well as the PS five. Um, and every console except the Xbox, which people are not happy about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. I mean, Marvel's Capcom two was definitely a staple for me in the arcades, uh, in my, in my teen years, um, like early teen, teen years. Uh, and so really excited to see it come back, unlocking characters, doing all that fun stuff. Um, I hope they don't pull any weird DLC shenanigans with it. Like I'm really hoping they just do the base roster. They do the unlocks normally. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want them to mess with it. I'm, I'm afraid. Is it Capcom um, that's doing this? Um, yeah, it's coming from Capcom. Yeah. Okay, and I don't, I don't think they've been too like bad about that stuff in the Resident Evil remakes. Yeah. Um, oh, that was weird. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so either. But I'm always just a little a little cautious is all so i'm just just a little concernicus but we'll see hopefully not um the just really quick lightning round fairy tale 2 uh also was shown just in 2025 uh stray is coming to the switch uh darkest dungeon 2 looney tunes wacky world of sports uh phantom brave uh lost hero from the creators of disgaea one of my favorite games of all time and the highest hour countage ever in any game that I've played. Um, so I don't know if 
I mean, Phantom Brave is definitely fun. I don't know if I have it in me for those like multi hundred hour tactical RPG experiences anymore, but still cool to see stuff uh, in that world. Um, and of course, the show closed with Metroid Prime. No, hang on a second, Jeremy. Hang on. What? Are you telling me that a Funko Pop game doesn't get you all excited? <laughs> We're not going to talk about the Funko Pop game, okay? <laughs> um, I just completely looked over the Funko Pop game, honestly. Like, it it looked so bad. It it just looked like like my first uh, CGI game. You know, I don't know. It, it just looked really, really bad. The aesthetics look terrible. It doesn't really have much of a core. Like, Funk, they were they're trying to make a Lego game, right? And without any of the charm and like practical good game design of a Lego of the Lego franchise, that's basically what's happening. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to talk about Lego. We are going to talk about Metroid Prime Four Beyond. Uh, after over seven years, we finally got a glimpse of Metroid Prime Four Beyond, set to release in 2025. This long-awaited installment shows Samus in a new adventure that promises to expand on the series' rich lore and intense gameplay. You called um, it. I didn't think we'd see it here. I thought they would hold it for a uh, Switch 2 reveal. Yeah. Yeah, baby. I get a gold star and a dollar. And that dollar will help me buy a lottery ticket. Um, no, I mean, I I'm, I was, I was, think, honestly, a lot of us were wanting it to be here. I think I was definitely, you know, huffing deep of the copium um, that it would be there. But in my heart of hearts, I I didn't know. You know, I didn't know if it was going to be here. I was perfectly ready to be disappointed that it didn't show up. And so when it did show up and it just checked that big green box for us, you know, um, that's what helped to make the show even more fantastic. Like, honestly, that was the kibosh that everybody wanted on the direct showcase. Um, And yeah, I mean, it was it was amazing. Uh, I can't believe that they were able to to knock it all out. and again, just the new Zelda IP, new Mario and Luigi, got some great Nintendo Switch Online stuff going on. Um, they showed off Metroid Prime 4. They've got this Dragon Quest remakes coming. So really, like, there was something for everybody, I feel like, in the show. Maybe you weren't excited about all of it, but there was something in there that probably you would hold on to and be like, man, I cannot wait for that, right? Um, and so for me, that made the show really great. Uh, I, I, you know, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it a nine out of 10. Uh, and that's just because, you know, again, there weren't a lot of expectations for this show. Um, I think it, it, they could have very easily just filled it with some, some cool indies, you know, always got, got love in my heart for the indies. So it's not like I would have held it against them. Again, I know they've got nine months left, uh, before they're, they're probably going to be showing off the new system. So I totally get it They're in. They're in planning mode for the new Switch. They absolutely could have dialed this in, 100%. Um, and they didn't. They they absolutely didn't. And honestly, as somebody who like works in tech, um, I am most impressed by their ability to keep a secret. Because I maybe I'm under a rock. Maybe I missed some articles. Maybe I missed some murmurs. Right. But like the Zelda game. The Brothership, like all these major IP titles. I think that, you know, obviously there were members of the Dragon Quest 3 HD remake, et cetera. Like there, and obviously we knew Metroid Prime 4 was happening, et cetera. But like some of these games that really delivered, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the Marvel Collection, come on. Like, like that, this was all stuff that nobody was really chatting, chattering about beforehand. You know what I mean? Like it, it was a total surprise, um, which I mean, I just, tip my hat to uh tip my hat to nintendo for for doing that so very cool yeah for me like metro Prime 4 i was happy to see because uh last year i put the og metro Prime, the remaster is one of my favorites of 2020 i really liked it uh, so I was, I was happy even though i didn't think they would i thought they would just hold it you know as a a nice like hype trump card that they can have in their in their pocket and uh whenever they show off the switch too <clears throat> but for me, like I thought it was a good show, but I, I I would not get up to like the nine out of ten. For me, it was a seven point five. A lot of stuff was just kind of okay to me. Like for me, like Dragon Quest, like it looks cool, but like it doesn't really have like a big pull. I just never played it before. Uh, like the Donkey Kong Country ones, I would have liked. It looked solo effort that was really disappointing. 
uh, what else? Uh, the S- Funko Pop, obviously, that was super bad. Um, for me, the things that really hit were like Zelda, uh, Metroid Prime Four, and Mario Brothers. So like three out of thirty whatever titles. So for I was slightly down, but I'm still happy with what they showed because again, we all we both thought that it was going to be a super heavy indie, and then maybe. They would give us the uh the the remasters of like Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, which I still want. By the way, I still want those. Give me those. Don't forget about those. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, I don't know if you saw, but the Digital Foundry, the Pixel people, were basically like, "Hey, we looked at that footage. That's just Switch One footage. That's not yeah. Switch footage." So, yeah, like, yeah. does that make you even more excited for what it might end up finally looking like running on that bigger, better hardware? I mean, and that, yeah. And, I mean, I have the Switch OLED. <laughs> you know, like, if it plays crisp and smooth on the Switch and they do not put an OLED on the Switch too, guess what I'm going to play it on? You know what I mean? Like, that's that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I mean, I'm really? still going to get it. I'm still going to get a Switch too. But I am, I, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit of that Tim Gettys in my blood, you know, that, that, <laughs> that OLED dedication. Um, you know, I, I feel like I would want to have the Metroid Prime 4 experience on that OLED display. Um, so yeah, I might, I might just end up doing that. We'll see. We'll see. That's interesting. I thought you would like, cause well, like Jeremy, what if they're like, yo, this is at, uh, 1440p it's running at uh, or, well maybe if it's if it's in uh, no no because if, if you play it on the Switch 2 you're probably going to play it connected to your TV because you know you do you have an OLED TV or just the OLED uh, Switch is the only OLED device you have yeah I don't have an OLED TV I have a 4K TV but I don't have an OLED Um, so oh, okay. yeah yeah. okay well let's say then hey you're going to dock it because you know it's just a normal LCD whatever but like you're getting 1440p is doing a bunch of stuff with DLSS. It looks it's 60 mm-hmm. FPS sure, on there sure. and DLSS. So it, it there you can upscale it to 4K 30 buttery smooth 30 FPS. As buttery smooth as 30 FPS can be. Like then would that make your decision a little more difficult? Or you're still like no, I yeah. don't feel like no, I th- I think it would. I think you know I think um I'm just again I'm still kind of flabbergasted that at least right now they haven't really made plans or we're not hearing any plans of the switch to having OLED functionality. Well, so they come really... on flat out said like a couple of months back, like there's no OLED. It's just not happening. It's launching an LCD, not an OLED. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, again, unless, you know, unless they come out, you know, next March or something, because maybe they'll do like a two step, right? Like a two phase, like, okay, in order to get it to market, we've got the LCD models coming and in, you know, three months, six months, we're going to have OLED, right? Like, well, I don't even think they would do that because then they would just cannibalize their LCD sales. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm just totally flabbergasted why they wouldn't have OLED on the on the display because, like, I am playing more in a mobile setting, like, day to day. You know what I mean? Like, so I, like, having an OLED display is effectively, like, playing on OLED then, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I'm, so sure, I'm sure they'll make it. I'm sure they'll make it more comp- more complicated for me. But but as of now, I'm like, yeah, well, if it runs on the Switch One, just fine, and I have an OLED display, that's probably how I'll end up playing it. So, no, yeah, to me, like, it's not. I'm not flabbergasted at all. Like, it's it's a perfect Nintendo move. Like, this it screams Nintendo. Like, of course, they're not going to give you this cool tech in it, even though it's proven tech. They put it in the Switch One. You think they would just give you two SKUs? And say, okay, you want the OLED, give us the extra hundred. And I'm sure people like you would be more than happy to do so. Um, but like they're so about, I'm sure, like uh uh, you know, those like manufacturing efficiencies and, and really grinding down that bill of material cost and trying to make it as profitable as possible. They're just not gonna bother with it. Again, I'm always like, I hope that we at least get a glass screen instead of plastic again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm sure I'm sure they're going to make it more complicated for me. Honestly, I'm just looking forward to seeing what their strategy is and learning more about the Switch 2 once it gets here. But all that to say, I think the, the, direct, the director was a great show. Um, for me personally, I think for a lot of Nintendo fans, they, they really enjoyed it. Um, 
and yeah, I've got some got some cool stuff to look forward to in the in the next six to nine months. Um, you know, Zelda game, Dragon Quest, uh, all kinds of goodies, uh, and then we'll see what the Switch Two has in store for us next year. Um, all right, next story: Shadow of the Erd Tree Too Hard just run away. Uh, this is an article from Clayton Ashley at IGN. Uh, Elden Ring's DLC isn't as difficult if you just run away. Is Shadow of the Earth Tree too hard? I thought it might be when I first started. The Black Owl Knight kicked my ass immediately, and I couldn't even go walking in the forest without a beast man ripping me to shreds. Then I remembered the strategy that got me through so much of the lands between. Just run away. You're not imagining things. Shadow of the Erd Tree's difficulty is a step above Elden Ring with enemies strong enough to make your level 100 plus character feel like a feeble baby. It might even be hard to remember feeling this vulnerable, but that's definitely how it was the first time you played Elden Ring. Just like the lands between, the land of shadow is also scary and violent, and sometimes it's really just telling you to fuck off. The thing is, running away won't just be more fun than dying over and over again. It's also how you get stronger, specifically by exploring the realm of shadow and finding scattered tree fragments and revered sacred ashes. These boons, which boost your stats and the stats of your ashes, respectively, are key to overcoming your inherent weakness in the Shadow Realm. Critically, you can find tons of these boosts simply by exploring. Uh, the article goes on to basically encourage folks to go find those fragments and ashes to make your character stronger in order to meet the high difficulty of the DLC, which has been a major point of contention over the last few days uh, regarding the Elden Ring DLC. Um, uh, so how are you feeling about the difficulty so far are you like with the crowd of like this is too hard like the spike was a little a little too extreme or are you thinking like no this feels about right it feels right I think it feels right I I definitely also got my ass kicked by the black all night like right away like I was wondering I found this mausoleum like oh interesting oh fog already cool cool Um, and you know wandered in he like loaded up his machine gun fire arrows and I was like, okay, like I kind of ran past those started fighting and then he hit me twice and I died. Um, I'm level 150. I have 60 vigor. I have my sword of night and flame. I have my carrion shield leveled up to the max. Like I, I have a, effectively, I have the Elden Lord. I'm, I'm a demigod, right? Like that's the idea. Um, and yet I am, was getting totally wrecked. Um, but the the article is absolutely right and the the honestly the structure of leveling up and getting more powerful with the scudgery fat fragments and the revered ashes is ingenious and i think done very well um you can get up to 20 levels in the scudgery fragments and i think 10 in the ashes i'm level 5 i think for the fragments and level 3 or 4 on the ashes and i'm already so much more comfortable <laughs> like so much more comfortable in the in the world um you know i i i've down like i mentioned at the beginning i think I, i've downed a couple of major bosses three major bosses um I'm, I'm working towards mesmer i think at this point um and you know getting picking up those fragments doing some exploring taking out taking out baddies um i'm using summons you know i'm using summons i'm using my mimic tier feel no shame about it uh and yeah i'm just having a having a grand old time so i don't think it's too difficult i think that people need to use the systems that are given to them and you know elden ring was like this too like elden ring was like this when it first started you do more exploring and you figure it out and i think it's great i think it, it works out just the way that you would expect do you think that part of the issue is that like Elden Ring kind of caught fire with a lot of audiences that normally wouldn't have it, especially on streaming platforms. And then, like, a bunch of newbies are jumping in, and, like, maybe they're not accustomed to sort of, like, that spike or that... Because I saw I noticed a lot of streamers were also, like, leveling their characters, sort of, like, getting ready for, for this DLC, and that maybe, you know, newer players are just like, what do you mean I got a level? I'm just going to jump in, like, where I last stopped. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could definitely be that kind of group of new players i mean the the kai stream definitely brought in a, a a new audience um and he streamed um earth tree too and he and he beat it too so shout out to, to kai just continuing to, to kill it out there on twitch and making just a really really great experience overall for for elden ring fans um but 
but yeah, I think, you know, there's definitely some element of that, but honestly, a lot of the complaints that I was seeing were those folks that had been spending like two years playing the game or maybe not two years consistently, but were doing the sort of like training montage, getting back into the DLC, like leveling up to level 300, 400, 500 plus, you know, like having all this crazy stuff going on and then jumping in and, you know, getting wrecked. Um, it, I think there's something to be said that it doesn't have any trophies. Um, I'm a little bummed about that, that the expansion doesn't have trophies. Like they did do trophies for old hunters, uh, for Bloodborne, for example, and they didn't do any for this one. Um, and I think that it might help those like more hardcore gamers who are like, I don't ever use summons or ashes or I don't do anything. I, I beat millennia naked with a stick, you know, or whatever. Um, and you know, there's something that's great. Like hats off to you, dude. Like, that's awesome. Like kudos to you. Like, I want you to be recognized for that. And I think there should be like a trophy or something for that. Sure. But in terms of like how you play the game, like day to day and how you beat the bosses and, you know, kind of get through it and see the lore and, and kind of beat the game. Um, you know, that's, you know, you, you use all the tools to your advantage. And so I think, um, there are some more veterans that aren't using those tools because they want to be that like badass that they were in the original game. And they just can't because they're not level 20 with their fragments or level 10 with their ashes, you know, like, and that really does matter. Like that really does matter. So, um, yeah. Well, it's a shame for, uh, the community that Greg Miller isn't, uh, super into this. Otherwise he would never stop hounding them until they added trophies. I know. I know that would be, I mean, I, I do wonder if they would like kind of retroactively add them in. I think that would be great to, to get them added and then be able to go back in and be like, Hey, here's your, here's your trophy for the divine beast and Rolana and the, the hippo and like all this other stuff. Right. Or, um, you know, alternative bosses that you fight. Um, I think that would be really cool, but yeah. Uh, overall, I think the great game difficulty is just fine. Use the tools to your advantage. Have a great time in the world. It's awesome. Thanks Miyazaki. You're, you're a real one. All right, last story. Fortnite gets a new mode and accompanying map. Uh, this is from Adam Bankers at IGN. Fortnite is launching a new mode today. Well, a couple days ago on June 22nd called Fortnite Reload that features a new map, a ton of classic weapons and locations, uh, endless revives as one as long one player on the team remains alive and no vehicles. As detailed by the Fortnite team, uh, Fortnite Reload is a 40-player fill or no-fill squads experience on a tighter map. With such POIs as Tidal Towers and Retail Row, uh, or Tilted Towers and Retail Row, players will be able to return to the action much quicker than other modes. When a player is downed, their individual reboot timer begins and will keep running as long as one other team member is alive. Reboot timers begin at 30 seconds and increase to 40 seconds later in a match, and teammates can decrease the time until their friends return by downing an opponent, eliminating a player, and wiping a whole squad. While it would be great to have your teammates returning left and right, it is important to note that reboots will end towards the closing moments of a match, so be sure to never get too comfortable with your aggressive tactics. Alongside all these reboots, a handful of unvaulted loot will be joining the fun uh, Fortnite re reload at launch, including the revolver, tactical shotgun, lever action shotgun, OG heavy shotgun, tactical submachine gun, infantry rifle, heavy assault rifle, uh, bolt action sniper rifle, rocket launcher, and grappler. Uh, victory crowns can still be earned. Uh, when you eliminate a player, they will drop small shield potions, medium ammo, light ammo, etc., etc. As far as the rewards, Fortnite Reload has intro quests with e that each reward uh, rewards 20,000 XP. If you complete three, you will unlock the digital dogfight contrail, which will get you pool cubes and stuff. You know, it's funny reading through this article, I'm like, man, I am so not into this game. <laughs> I'm like, what really? are you talking about? I am so not into this game. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I'm just not. Dude, it's I'm so hype. I I really loved it. Yeah, you know, you know, it. It. tell me about it. Tell me about it. Just yeah. So basically, you know, when you go into Fortnite, it's a massive map. It's huge. There's, it's so big that there are just different areas that like, almost like different biomes, right? There's like desert area, sort of a uh, underworld area right now. In area that looks like ancient Greece. Uh, and an area that's very uh, kind of green and, and just kind of very normal looking. Um, and, but when you go into this new mode called Reload, the entire map just becomes incredibly compact. And you are just in people's faces immediately. 
you're downing people, it's more chaotic, it's faster paced. The best way I can describe it is Fortnite smashed into Call of Duty Warzone. Um, the uh, Call of Duty Warzone has its own uh, mode, very that's like that's basically ripping it off. Uh, I can't remember what what it was called right now. It's like revive mode or something. So basically, yeah, it's you were you're with your squad. If any of them go down, they can come back. You don't need to go to the reboot van and like hold X for like ten seconds to bring them back. It's it's automatic. But that changes once all of you start getting taken down uh, uh, quickly, and you're and you're all down for the count, and there's just one left. So all of a sudden, you have to be extremely tactical. You got to be extremely careful because uh, if they get you, then that's it. Your team is your whole team is eliminated, even if they're like a second away from coming in. Um, so. To me, it's really interesting that they were able to bring that game style into this, and it's it's really it wor- working really well. Um, it's very different from all the other modes. Uh, I like that the weapons are different. It makes you uh, kind of change up your play style a little bit, uh, and just add, it adds a bit of freshness to to the game, which is always been impressive about Epic that they've been able to again continue to add stuff to the game to keep it fresh. Um, so I'm I'm having a blast with it, and I'm definitely gonna keep playing it alongside the uh, normal battle royale. Well, awesome! I'm 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 glad I I'm not really big into shooters, you know. So like I think that's just that's just part of it. I know there's like the build modes and stuff like that too, but I just never I just never got into it. I mean, again, I'm not I'm so happy that people have this game and that they love Fortnite and all that other good stuff. Definitely not trying to yuck anybody's yum. I'm just like reading it, and I'm just like, what? is all this stuff like <laughs> i guess i guess it's kind of like when you were playing wow and it's saying like and if you log in you get this special armor they get you plus 10 percent xp for like whatever like uh art you know legacy artifacts or whatever and so um I suppose jump in would, jeremy there's so much stuff to do now you can race cars you can play rock band you can play build or no build you can just go in there and just shoot at people and not have to worry about building mm-hmm. stuff and now you gotta reload there's a lot there jeremy maybe some there's for you maybe maybe I already got enough. I already got enough to do, man. You want me to play GTA five eventually or what? Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Uh, all right. Those are all of our uh, news stories for today. Uh, Alan, what have you got for us in the deals corner? Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about LCD screens, OLED screens. Well, the steam deck is got a little sale going on. Valve has them 15% off right now. Uh, these are new units, not refurbished. Uh, and with that, the 64 gigabyte model is going to be, Two ninety six ninety five, and the five twelve gigabyte model is three eighty one sixty five. So those are pretty good prices. Uh, remember that uh, if you get the sixty four one, you can just kind of buy like your own SSD to plug in. That's about five twelve for around fifty dollars. Oh, yeah. um, although I would argue that if you just are averse to opening up your electronics at all, that the five twelve for three eighty one is actually a decent deal because you're not paying like that much more for it you're basically paying the 50 that you would normally pay anyway for a new ssd and you're just giving valve valve an extra 30 dollars to kind of just install it for you so i think (laughs) one of these models whichever one you're comfortable with is is going to be a good a good call and like man i I was tempted but i'm like man you know like it feels like that xbox handheld this summer and i feel like that probably will work better for me um, and also just, uh, it feels like also maybe the next gen of the, of the Valve Steam Deck itself, maybe soon-ish. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think so. I, you know, I got the LCD Steam Deck. I got the one terabyte storage because I actually think it's worth it for you to get the, the 64 and invest at $85 in, you know, in the, the drive. Like, Yes. It is a little bit technical. Like you do have to have some, you know, ability to, you know, install like the 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 Steam OS onto a uh, onto the flash drive um, or onto the yeah onto the flash drive before you put it into your Steam Deck. But really, it's not too bad. And then you can get a terabyte Steam Deck for you know basically uh, three hundred and seventy five or whatever, right? So. Um, so yeah, I, I would say you can go that route or, you know, to your point, if you, if you really don't want to mess with it, if you don't want to fight with it, then, you know, you can invest in the, in the 512. Um, you just have, you have to manage your, your, um, 
hard drive space a little bit closer there. You can't just go buy and download all the games on all the various Steam sales uh, at any given moment. Um, so I mean, like, uh, if push comes to shove, you can get that SD card, which is allegedly is like not that's true not that's bad. true the sd card the sd card is makes it a lot simpler you're right yeah we could you could do an sd card instead of having to upgrade the internal storage but it's nice that like you know these options are are uh more reasonable for people who don't want to open them at all it's nice yeah absolutely um but yeah so check it out steam deck great piece of hardware i'm still loving mine uh and you know i think eventually might might make the upgrade to to an OLED uh, since you know I've got my OLED uh, Nintendo Switch that I that I love so much. Um, but otherwise, it's 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 been a great system, and I've been enjoying playing my my Steam library on it. So great deal there. Uh, I think that's it. I think that does it for us today. Um, so until next time, I'm Jeremy. I'm Alan. Keep gaming, everybody. See ya. Thank you.